Well, we say praise the Lord to everyone and happy Father's Day to all of our fathers and fathers-to-be. We uh, greet you in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Father of all. We thank the Lord for another day. He has blessed us, and this is a day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, this is Lighthouse Apostolic Faith Church, convenience located right here in the Chatham community, 7759 South Eberhardt Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. And we are so grateful to the Lord that he has blessed us one more time, just one more time, kept us, watched over us as we travel over the dangerous streets of Chicago and Illinois, and, and he has preserved our life that we are able to come together once again and to glorify his mighty name. All right, we're going to go into our Sunday school lesson for today. And our Sunday school lesson is taken from the book of First Samuel. The book of First Samuel. And the uh, subject of our lesson says, Jonathan attacked the Philistines' outposts. Jonathan attacked the Philistines' outpost. Some might say Philistine, some may say Philistine. Um, this is a period in the life of the time that we're looking at in the life of Israel when uh, Israel was yet a small nation compared to the nation that was around them. And Israel had enemies on every side of them, even now. As we look at the geographic of Israel today, Israel is incompetent about them, all their enemies, and their back is against the Mediterranean Sea. And all around, Israel is their enemies. But God has consistently protect her. Even in our lesson today, we find that the Philistines was the enemy of Israel. They despised the Israelites. And it's got to be, had to be a very difficult situation that Israel found herself in. Uh, it is said that history say that the Philistines had uh, <clears throat> a more advanced nation than Israel. The Philistines had, was the one that uh, came up with the iron industry. During that time, he bronze and, 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 and they had bronze, bronze swords, and Israel was known for their uh, Weapons was, they didn't have weapons like the Philistines did. They, they, they was forming people. They formed land. So they had plows and things. That's why uh, you hear one of the old uh, Testament prophets said that they would turn their plows into shears into, and, and their, 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 their pruning hooks into weapons. Well, the Philistines, they had iron. So they had, uh, if you would say, uh, up on Israel. And they despised Israel. They did not like Israel at all. And during this time, uh, in our lesson, Saul was Israel's first king. Saul, King Saul. And you all know, in, as the Bible teaches us, that God did not choose Saul to be a king. The peoples wanted Saul. God didn't want Saul. God did not choose Saul. 
But because of the people, God allowed Saul to be Israel king. So now, during this period of time, Saul was in a position that like many of us today, sometimes we get ourselves in a position that we don't qualify. We get ourselves in a position that we not, we're not uh, capable of handling it, especially when we don't acknowledge God in our life. Now, uh, as you studied this lesson, before we get into this lesson, uh, Saul had the mindset, he, first of all, he had gotten in trouble with God. First thing Saul did, the first mission God sent Saul on, Saul disobeyed God's word. Samuel told him to go in and wipe out all of the Amalekites. Saul didn't do it. That was one strike against him. And then the other strike was against him when he took on a priesthood position, which he was not to do that. So Saul had got himself in trouble with God. And once a king, a leader, or any person get in trouble with God, you or whoever you are, are in trouble. Big, deep trouble. Now, the point of it is we find in our lesson, I'm trying to get to our lesson. Israel, the Philistines had come together and they had planned to attack Israel. They planned to attack her because uh, uh, they didn't like them. They did not have any love. They didn't care for Israel at all. But Israel had to go to them and buy it from them. And the history said that due to the Philistines having <clears throat> modern technology, they was taking iron and making swords and all these different things, iron. And Israel didn't have that technology. So what they would do, they would go and buy from the Philistines and have the Philistines to make their uh, whatever they need. And the Philistine was charging them ex extortionate prices, exuberant prices, where they was paying, where they should have been paying $5 for items, item, they was paying $20 for the item. And they didn't care for Israel at all, but what God, this is what happened when, when, when a nation keep their eyes on God. Even though leadership had got in trouble with God, but God is faithful. And we can see the faithfulness in God. When Saul had gotten his soldiers and they heard that the Philistine was going to attack them. It said Saul had about 2,000 soldiers. The Philistine had 30,000 soldiers. Somebody's in trouble. Somebody is in trouble. And uh, so what happened? Jonathan, it is said, was Saul's oldest son. And Jonathan was a man of courage. He wasn't like his daddy. He wasn't like the king Saul. Saul was not a man of courage. And you know when, when, when he was selected, when the people selected Saul to be a king, what did he do? Saul went and hid himself. No courage. I guess he realized that, hey, I don't qualify for this job. He went and hid himself, and they, had, they found him among the stuff. He hid himself among the stuff. Now, we see the persona, the real Saul now. He's in this position, and he's got to go to war with, with their enemy. And these were not only Israel's enemy, but, but these were God's enemies. So, uh, they had gotten themselves in a situation where 
They didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to do. And Jonathan, that name Jonathan means the Lord has given. This, this Jonathan was one of the uh, commanders in Saul's army. And it is said that history said that he had about a thousand men that he was over. He had a thousand soldiers working under him. And he had an armor barrier. So this time when they're sitting there waiting, not knowing what to do or how to deal with things, Jonathan takes some courage. All right, we're going to go into our lesson. Jonathan takes some courage. Jonathan takes some courage. The faith and glory, the faith and godly courage of Jonathan, the Lord saved Israel with 2,000 soldiers, God delivered Israel. Our lesson says 1 Samuel 14 and 1. You read that. Now it came to pass upon a day that Jonathan, the son of Saul, said unto the young man that bare his armor, Come, and let us go over to the Philistines' garrison that is on the other side. But he told not his father. And Saul tarried in the uttermost part of Jabea, under a pomegranate tree, which is in Migran. And the people that were with him were about 600 men. And Ahiah, the son of Ahitab, Ichabod's brother, the son of Phinehas, the son of Ehi, Eli, Mm -hmm. the Lord's priests in Shiloh, wearing an ephod. And the people knew not that Jonathan was gone. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. Jonathan. <clears throat> Saul is sitting somewhere scared. No courage. Now, show you something. How many men did Saul have with him? 600 men. Because of his, <clears throat> him not having courage and not a man that relied upon God, the 600 men that he had, he had 2,000. By him having no courage and they saw that he had no courage, they left him. You want to be a leader. You're going to be a leader. You got to show the people, look here. Hey, we can do this. You got to have some courageous. You got to be have some courage. And Saul was scared. And those men saw that, hey, if, hey <laughs> we in trouble. Our leader's scared. There's no hope for us. They left him, and he only had 600 men sitting there trying to figure out what is he going to do. Sitting there twiddling his thumb, trying to figure out what am I going to do. Scared. God can use no scared people. God wants men and women that's going to be of good courage, that, 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 that believe <clears throat> in God. Uh, I say, here's Saul sitting here with 600 men, don't know what to do, and Jonathan got one armor bearer. And Jonathan tell that armor bearer, come on, let's, let's go do something. I got an inkling from the Lord. I got a vision from the Lord. God that spoke to me. Now this is leadership. God gave Jonathan a vision. Says, go over to the garrison, the Philistine garrison, and go over there and attack them. And God spoke to him and told him and showed him how, what this do, the time to do it. It's talking about staying in tune with God. When you're in tune with God, you will hear things that other people don't hear. God will show you some things that other people can't see. 
Saul is the king. Not only that, <clears throat> he had one of Eli's grandsons that with him, which was a priest. And the priest exposed her before the king going about. The priest, <clears throat> the king go to the priest and consult with God, and God would speak to the priest and tell him what to do. The man was in such a pickle that he didn't know what to do. So God took and used Jonathan, told Jonathan what to do. Jonathan got this one man and said, let's go over. And well, let's go over there and attack. First of all, God got a way of doing things that we just don't understand. Sometimes when things be done, we can't figure God out. Amen. God understood this. If he take two men and go over and attack that Philistine uh, garrison and wipe them out, that's going to put fear in the others. Amen. That's going to put fear in others. Y'all heard that old saying uh, when we was a kid coming up, and if three or four guys walked up to you and wanted to start something, you make sure the, one that, the first one that walked up to you and said something, you cold cocky. And the rest of them going to run. The rest of them going to back up. God took Jonathan. <laughs> Went over and wiped out, it says, about 20 men or more. Two guys. And guess what? It wasn't easy for him to do that. Jonathan had to go upside a mountain that was slippery. They had that. They had, thorns and he had to go through all that to crawl on his hand and make his way but look what he got he got the victory he put fear into a great nation put fear into a great nation Jonathan 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 says uh, told a young man says uh let us, where, where you read that at? Oh, verse one. verse 1. Now come, now came to pass that Jonathan told the Saul and his, Jonathan the son of Saul, the young man that bared his armor, come and let us go over to the Philistines, garrison that is on the other side. But he told not his father. He told him now he didn't tell his father. Wonder why he didn't tell his father. No faith. Because his father probably would have discouraged him. No, faith. no, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. No, you, you're not gonna be able to do it. It's only two of you all, and it's 20 or 30 of them over there. But see, he had no faith in his God. He had no faith in the God of Israel. There, there is a, a saying I was reading uh, in regarding, I think it was a war that the United States was fighting a nation, one of uh, the nations, one of the generals. And said so when he came off of the Pacific Ocean, and I, I'm not a Army person, military person, but said when he came off of the Pacific Ocean, the boat let all the soldiers out. And when they got out of the, the boat and, and, and they got ready to go up on the land, they found out that their enemy had flanked them on both sides. There was the enemy on the left side, the enemy on the right side, and there was the enemies in front of them. And the general, a man of courage, and I don't know if he got this from God or what, but he said to his soldiers, we got them just what we want them. <laughs> How in the world are you going to have somebody where you want them? Your enemy got you in compass all about you. But the thing was, he couldn't go in back in the sea because the boat is gone. 
And he, he said one thing to his soldiers. We got to fight. And we going to win. He said, we got them where we want them. How in the world are you going to have somebody when you want me? And the odds is against you. That's when God stepped in. Jonathan had the Philistine right where he wanted them. <laughs> because God had spoke to him. He had them where he wanted them. Israel had the Philistine right where they wanted them. But Saul couldn't see it. Sometimes God put us in a predicament where our back is against the wall and, and then and then only will we be able to see our strength. Then and then only we'll be able to see God work. But if we depending upon our own self and not depending on God, <clears throat> and you'll find out if you study this lesson, Saul was depending upon Saul because he made a statement. Once they beat they won the battle. He says, I have conquered my enemy. Not God. Saul said, I have conquered my enemy. Read on. Verse 4. And between the passages by which Jonathan sought to go over unto the Philistines' garrison, there was a sharp rock on the one side and a sharp rock on the other side. And the name of the one was Bozitz, and the name of the other, Senef. The forefront of the one was situate northward over against Mitchmash, and the other southward over against Jabia. And Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor, come and let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. Uh-oh, that boy had something. He, he had a vision. He trusted in God. I, I, I don't worry, I'm a barrier, about how many soldiers are in the garrison. Don't worry about that. If the Lord is with us, if the Lord be on our side, yeah. it can be 10,000. He's going to give us the victory. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if Jonathan had read about Gideon. When Gideon went up against 135,000 soldiers and he only had 300 men. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he was knowledgeable about that. But this young man had some courage. He trusted in the God of Israel. Yes. He trusted in the God of Israel. And let me tell you something. Life sometimes is not so easy. Sometimes because we walk with God and we serve God, we think that everything is peaches and cream. We think that we shouldn't have any trials and tested. You're going to have some if you walk with God. Amen. If you walk with God, you're going to go through some stuff. Amen. You're going to go through some things. You're going to suffer some things. The Bible said Jesus suffered and he was who? He was the king. Amen. And if he suffered, we ought to arm ourselves likewise. Yes. We think that, that, that now, now, yeah, God had let him to know that I'm going to give you the victory, but you got to go through all these, you got to go through these jagged rocks, you got to crawl, and you got to get stuck by thorn bushes, and, but yet, God gave him the victory. A lot of times, we don't want to go through, we don't want to suffer the thing that it takes to get what God wants us to be. Amen. <laughs> That's why a lot of us, and we start this walk with God and we find out that there's certain things that I can't do, certain things I got to stop doing. So, uh-uh, that it, this ain't for me. I'm going back. No, this is not for me. We're looking at the present. You don't look at the present. You look at the future. What will my end be like? What is the end result? 
Don't look at the present. That, 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 that baboon said to uh, that in the Lion King, what that little lion name? The little lion that both been the king and, and lion king. Simba. 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 Told him, slapped him upside the head and said, look beyond the mountain. Stop looking at the mountain. You got to look beyond that mountain. That's where the blessings is, beyond the mountain. And you got to be determined to get there. Martin Luther King said it, that, that, that coming to the mountain of despair, he would take hope and carve out. I'm not going to let nothing stop me. I'm getting to the other side. That's the way we have to be. We have to be like that. Whatever I got to go through, Lord, I'm willing to go through it. As long as you be with me. Don't, 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 I'm not going by myself because if I try by myself, I'm not going to make it. But if you go with me, if the Lord be with us, this is what Jonathan is telling this young man. Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor, come and let us go over into the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us. <laughs> Jonathan understand if God don't be with us, we in trouble. But I believe I got an inkling from the Lord. And he going to work for us. That there be no restraint <clears throat> to the Lord to save by many or by few. God going to give us the victory, whether just you and I or my dad in the whole army, we going to get the victory. Talking about trusting your God, <clears throat> knowing something about your God, having courage when nobody else has courage. God always don't have himself a witness. God, God always have somebody. God gonna speak to somebody. Somebody always gonna have an ear to hear what God is saying. And if you don't want to be obedient to God, God said, you know what? I go out there and, 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 and bring a wine here, a drug addict, a drug dealer, a gambler, somebody that will hear my voice. And I will use them. I will use them. All I want is somebody with some courage. You can see some of these guys out here, they got some nerve, they got some courage. They're just being misled. They got started on the wrong path. Look at Apostle Paul. Look at that man. See, uh, God is showing us the ability that he had. Paul was going around persecuting the church, killing up folks, having them killed, having them fed to the beast. And God said, hmm, I can use him. That brother got some courage. I can use him. He just, he, just, he just on the wrong side. <laughs> he, he got up on the wrong side of the bed. His, his, his father's religion. I need to bring him over into the light in this apostolic way. Got Paul over here and got it. And Paul got baptized, got the Holy Ghost. And look at the mighty work that that man did. Even though history say, history say Paul it was accounted to Paul for killing over 5,000 Christians to his account. But look what God did. Took that man, that, that, that killer, that murderer, that bigot, took him and saved him. And because of God doing this with Paul, we're in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ today. We're living off of some of the things, the letters that Paul wrote. Don't, don't, don't look at God, don't, don't look at somebody because of their condition and think ain't no hope. Amen. There's always hope. Amen. If the person, if, if we submit ourselves to God, there's always hope. Amen. God, our God is a great God. There's no restraint to what he can do. 
that there's not no strength to what God can do. Amen. Situation look bad. Look like you in a corner and your back is against the wall and you don't see no way out. Somehow or another, God, they turn that thing around like that. Turn it around. And I know some of y'all been in a situation that God stepped in and worked that thing for you. Yes. That was, should have been word, that should have been action of encouragement. Let us know I can trust God. I can depend on God. Read on. Verse 7. And his armor bearer said unto him, Do all that is in thine heart. Turn thee. Behold, I am with thee according to thy heart. I'm going with you. Jonathan, I see something in you that I don't see in your daddy. I'm going with you. Whatever you set out to do, I'm with you. I'm I, I'm I'm your I, I got your back. <laughs> I got your back, Jonathan. That's all. Uh, 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 God need to hear somebody to say, if the Lord go with me, I'll go. Amen. That's all God want to hear. If the Lord be with me, the Lord go with me. Moses told God, said, I'm not going if you don't go with me. Amen. But if you go with me, I know everything going to be all right. Jonathan encouraged was encouraged. And this young man was encouraged. He said, I'm with thee according to thine heart. Because Jonathan, he might not have read Jeremiah, but he said, he was saying in so many words, you got the heart of God. <laughs> you got the heart of God. And, 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 and if you got the heart of God, I know what my mother and my forefathers them went through when they were down in Egypt. And God brought them out with a mighty hand. God brought them out on eagle wings. Amen. Brought them through that Red Sea. Amen. Called them uh, to triumph. Fed them when they was in the wilderness. There wasn't no jewel tea stoves there. Amen. He protected them. He was a light for them. Brought water from a rock. Yes. You have a heart like God. And, I, and I, whatever's in your heart, I, I'm, I'm by you. I'm sticking with you. I see something in you. Verse 8. Then said Jonathan, Behold, we will pass over unto these men, and we will discover ourselves unto them. We will reveal ourselves to them. We 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 not gonna come out hiding and trying to slip around. We want to show ourselves to them. See what was going on during that time. And this was very deceitful <laughs> for those Philistines. Many of Saul's soldiers, the twenty th the two thousand soldiers Saul had. Many of them had left. 4,000 of them had left. Was it 4,000? 400. 1,400. Because see, he had six left. So he had 2,000 started out. <clears throat> and he only had six left, the scripture teacher. So 1,400 of those soldiers had left Saul and would join up with the Philistine. <laughs> so when you, when you don't do what you ought to do, when you don't stand like God says stand, if you don't walk according to God's word, anybody in a reasonable mind not going to follow you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If anybody in a reasonable mind and got any kind of thinking and knowledge of God's word, they're not going to follow you and they see that you're not following after God's word. Amen. The men saw saw. Scared, nervous, they left and went joined up with the Philistines. So when the Philistines saw Jonathan and them coming, they said, oh, they finna join, they coming to join up with us. They did doing like the rest of them. But God had a plan. God had a plan. God had a plan. Jonathan said, let's, let's reveal ourselves to him. 
And they said, oh, then here come some more of them scared Israelites. They, they, they know. They, <laughs> you ever seen the person so, com so uh, I would say, cock cocky or confidence in themselves? You see some teams, sports teams, they get all cocky and confidence. And that's when they fall on their face. You find people that very, it, it don't pay for you to be all cocky and, 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 and arrogant. Because somehow or another, you're going to stumble and fall on your face. He, this is this the state that these Philistines that got in. Oh, here, here comes more. They coming over to join up with us because they know we be bad guys. <clears throat> Jonathan, verse 8 says what? Then said Jonathan, Behold, we will pass over these men, and we will discover ourselves unto them. Uh-huh. If they say thus unto us, tarry until we come to you, then we will stand, stand still in our place, and will not go up unto them. But if they say thus, come up unto us, then we will go up. For the Lord hath delivered them into our hand. Now this is the this is the garrison. This is the stronghold. This is the tower. <clears throat> this is that they're in a position now that is going. It's hard for them to be conquered. They 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 in a place where the enemy would 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 would, would, would have to be. Uh, I would say they'd have to come. In a very strong way, because the Philistine gas and what history say, they was up on like a mountain. They was up there, and they never they tower with the gas and where they could look all around and see their enemies. So he said, "We we we didn't crawl through these jagged rocks and everything. Now we have to reveal ourselves. We got to step out. Now this is the time when we're gonna have to step out on God." We're going to have to step out on God. We're going to have to uh, put ourselves, our life at jeopardy. We're going to have to put ourselves at God's uh, a protection, under God's protection. And these Philistines saw him and they said, oh, okay, they want to join with us, so come on. Now, if they had <coughs> told us to stay, then they might have been in trouble. But they said, oh, yeah, come on, come on. Inviting them into their camp, not knowing that that was their, their death sentence. Not knowing that God had a plan. Amen. They was thinking one way, and God is doing something else. It says here, <clears throat> If they say um, say thus unto us, Terry, wait where you at. Don't 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 go any further. You don't went you don't came far enough now, and we don't want you in into our territory. You didn't got far enough. That Terry mean that they, they, they was telling them to wait where you at until we come to you. We gonna come to you. We're not gonna let you come into this area because when we let you come into this in, into our space then there's a possibility that, that some harm could come to us. They didn't do that. <clears throat> they said, then we will stand still in our place and will not go up unto them. Then we have to stand still on a barrel and see what God going to do. <laughs> that, 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 that's the bottom line. If they tell us to wait, we might be in trouble. So we have to stand still. We can't move. Because they are suspicious. They, 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 they are not so careless. He said, but, uh, but if, if they say, come up unto us, then we will go up for the Lord. Not me. Not 
my strength and my wisdom. But the Lord, the Lord God, the Lord of the universe, has delivered them into our hand. And this shall be a sign unto us. God then spoke. God then moved. God then said, He's shown Himself. Now, what we got to do is act on what God has shown us. If God show you something, then we ought to move on what God has shown us. Make sure it's God. Make sure it's God. Don't move on what you think. Don't move on what you feel. You make sure that that thing came from inside, that spirit of God said so. And if you do it that way, you're going to be victorious. Jonathan said, uh, the Lord has delivered them into our hand and it shall be that's the sign for us to pull our sword and get ready to fight the battle is already won all we got to do is follow up on what God said that's all we got to do if God is in it God is in it. Whatever come against you, whatever enemy come against you, I, you know something? And I would that we learn this. If we are walking in the will of God and obedient to God's word, we don't have to worry about your, you ain't got no business worrying about your enemy. Amen. That should be your last worry. As long as you're under the umbrella of God, you're walking according to God's word. God said that I am the Lord thy God. I will protect you. I will provide for you. I will make a way for you. Don't you stay in his will. Don't worry about folks. That, that fear is something that saints should not have should have respect. But the fear, I'm talking about the fear so bad that, oh, oh they're gonna, uh, gonna break in my house. They're gonna do this. Get, put some locks on your doors and, and do what you know you do and, and go on about your business. Amen. Can't stop a thief, no way. If he wanna get you, he gonna get you. <laughs> if God don't watch over your house, yes. <laughs> God don't watch over your house, if, if God wants you to know your house, you can leave that with the door open. Be right. walk right by and we ain't see it. Yeah. Or God will let him know, don't you, don't you mess with that house. <laughs> <laughs> but if God is with us, you have to fear. Jesus, every time Jesus came around his disciples and they were scared, Jesus would say, fear not. You have no business fear. God has not given us what? You go around fearing and scared and shaking in your boots all the time. Who are you trusting in? Yourself. You're not trusting in God. And people like that can't get the victory. They can't get the victory. Read on. Verse 11. And both of them discovered themselves unto the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, Behold, the Hebrews come forth out of the holes where they had hid themselves. Listen. Yeah, y'all. Y'all must be the guy hungry. Because see, they were there left in the hide. Some of them had joined up with the Philistine army. Yeah, y'all got hungry now. Y'all run out of food. Y'all came out of them cracks and them crevices of them, 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 them stones and, and them caves. Y'all come on in. Come on in. Join up with us. Get you something to eat over there. Didn't know they, 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 they death was, was standing there waiting on them. Amen. Didn't understand the plan of God because they was lifted up in themselves. They was lifted up in themselves. And they, Jonathan said, those uncircumcised. 
them ungodly. <laughs> That's what he was saying. Them ungodly folks. <clears throat> we got God with us. I'm a bearer. <clears throat> he said, them Hebrews have come forth out of the holes where they had hid themselves. They was hiding. He didn't run out of food. Now they come in looking for some from, from us. And yeah, they got something for you. All right. Verse 12. And the men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come up to us, and we will show you a thing. And Jonathan said unto his armor bearer, Come up after me, for the Lord have delivered them into the hand of Israel. And Jonathan climbed up upon his hands and upon his feet and his armor bearer after him. And they fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer slew after him. Two men. It is said it was anywhere between 20 and 30 men Philistines at that garrison. That garrison was a lookout post. Supposed to be in a stronghold. And God took two men and brought the, the stronghold of Israel's enemy down. Amen. Took them down. And when they heard about this, when them Philistines heard about this, they got nervous. They got scared. Yeah. They got scared. They, they were so fearful that they started killing them own self. They was fearful. Saw they had planned, they had planned an attack on Israel. The Philistine army had sent, got uh, three groups of soldiers they were going to attack Israel from this side, the right side the other side and the back. they was going to attack Israel they had a plan but they didn't realize that the God of Israel was working for Israel Amen. the God of Israel was working and when they found out that the garrison had been attacked and those men was dead fear fell up on them Fear fell up on them. Then Saul went out. That's a, some more to that story. I'll show you something as you read it. When Saul got the victory that day, Saul jumped up and told the men, now, just think you've been fighting all day. You've been fighting all day long. No food, you haven't eaten nothing. And Saul told old men, don't y'all eat nothing. You're fast. Mm -hmm. Now that didn't make sense. Amen. Show you how people, when God, when you don't, you, when you're not following the instructions of God, you people will make some foolish mistakes when you're acting on your own, on your own wisdom, on your own knowledge. You read, you'll find Saul said, I have got victory over the Philistines. I got victory. Nobody eat. Nobody eat. You done worked all day. You done been out there fighting on the battle. You done killed up all these men. And then you're going to tell these guys not to eat. They hungry. That didn't make sense. Anytime this real... <clears throat> would fight their enemy and get to spoil, they would Rejoice. flourish. They would enjoy themselves. Mm -hmm. And this man had told him, don't y'all eat nothing. Jonathan didn't know it. He didn't know his dad had put that decree out. Yeah. And he ate some honey. And when he ate that honey, every bowel of soldier looked at him. Don't you know what your daddy said? Your dad said you wasn't supposed to be eating. You fast. And Saul, and they word got to Saul, and Saul said, whoever ate, if even if it be my son, he got to die. Mm -hmm. Lord, have mercy. You scared, joker? <laughs> this, this fellow here, God, and used this man to get the battle, to win the battle. And then you trying to get it, the victory, you trying to get credit for it, talking about, I got victory. Mm. Instead of saying, God gave us the victory, 
You saying, I've got the victory. Another time he messed up. Another time he messed up. Jonathan got the credit. Those men, when Saul found out that that was his son that ate, and he talked about killing him, those men rose up and said, you're not touching Jonathan. Amen. You're not going to touch Jonathan. Amen. We know you are our king, but this one order we're not carrying out. <laughs> because we look as though you were scared. <laughs> you done proved to us that you ain't about nothing. We have more respect for Jonathan than you. That's what they were telling him. We got to be courageous. We can't be scared. Even though in the troublesome time that we're living in now, and the things that we are going through in life, we got to be of good courage. We got to know that God is with us. How do we know God is with us? Because we are walking according to his command. Now, if you're not walking according to God's command, you're out there doing your thing, you have a right to be scared. But if you're walking according to God's commandment, all that you know, God's going to fight for you. You got to worry about it. You might hit a few potholes in the road. You might have a few days up and down. You might go through a little spell, but you're going to come out a warrior. You're going to come out victoriously. It's not, don't get caught up in that mountain that's before you. Amen. See, that's what we look at. Stop looking at what's before you. Look at what's beyond the mountain. Look at what the end going to be. How will I be in the end? Where will I stand in the end? Because right now I'm going through some stuff. I'm going through these jagged rocks. I'm climbing. I'm going through these thorns and thistles trying to get my way home. But I'm not going to let that distract me. I'm not going to let that detour me. I'm not going to let that cause me to not keep following God. Because I'm looking on the other side of my troubles. I'm looking on the other side of my disappointment. Martin Luther King said, you take hope and carve out a tongue through that mountain. Now, now, now that's, that's saying something there, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see my way out no way. Yeah. But I'm going to take hope. I'm, hope, I'm, I'm going to hope in God. I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to go before God in prayer. I'm going to tell him how I feel and what I'm going through. He knows. Yes. Amen. Perhaps he'll bat me up on eagle wings. Perhaps he'll do like Israel. He did Israel. When they were at the Red Sea and didn't know what to do, Pharaoh was behind them. Mountain on each side. God, you're going to have to open up some doors. Trust in you. I'm depending on you. I'm not depending on my money. I'm not depending on my education. I'm not depending on uh, 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 my child. Yeah. Not depending on my relatives. I'm depending on you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jonathan attacked the stronghold of the Philistine. The people that despise Israel, they didn't like Israel. God says, I'll make your enemy your footstool. Just stay in his will. Stay in his command. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you.